Don Barnes here with Red Barnes Audio. And today I'm gonna to be talking about Studio One version 3.2. This is kind of a first looks, but I'm calling this Workflow Wins. Now this is focused on narration and voiceover and podcasting and anything dialogue related. We're not talking about music where you have over 50 enhancements. I'm gonna talk about the top three that apply to both recording and processing dialogue and the related audio. So it's much, much smarter, these new tools. You're gonna to really love this. And I'm gonna talk about the top three, my top three favorites. Number one is the Smart Combo tool. I'll go over that in detail in a second. We're also gonna look at Quick Zoom. We're gonna look at some of the new transport options. And then I'll throw in some tips or tricks and some bonus things. But understand this one thing. I'm not going to go over a lot of the great tools that were in 3.1 and 3.0 and 2 and that are still there. And when we combine those with the new tools, we get a superset that's pretty amazing. And most people don't know all the shortcuts for version, the previous versions. So this is just overload, but you can learn it incrementally. And if you don't like something, you can turn it off and work the way you always have. So there's no reason not to just go out and get the new version today. Now we're looking at Studio One 3.2. You can tell that by looking at the mouse tools and up top you have this little bracket which is going to be our smart combo tool when i click on that it separates them out into the old-fashioned way of working you know i'm walking both ways i'm walking barefoot in the snow both ways uphill in a snowstorm and that's what i tell my kids anyway but you will most likely turn this on and leave it on and never turn it off it's just you don't need to and there are a bunch of advantages from leaving it on let me give you a couple examples the way this is working now as a combo is if I'm in the top half of my audio, I get a certain cursor that happens to be the range tool where I can select or when I'm doing punch and roll or anything else, wherever I want to set the cursor, I can click one time and it's going to set the cursor. There's some other behaviors. I'll talk about them in a minute. But if I move to the bottom, I now get the arrow tool. The arrow tool is designed to select a range or to grab something and move it around or to grab something and move it to another track and maybe make a copy. There's a set of behaviors that the arrow tool has. There's a set of behaviors that the range tool has. And when you have them combined into the smart combo, then depending upon where you are, you get these different behaviors. And all throughout the demo, I'll be undoing things. So if you see me undo something, that's just a keyboard shortcut, control or command Z, depending on what platform you're on. So let me give you some interesting things. When I'm doing punch and roll in the old days, you know, back before cell phones, actually just two weeks ago, I was clicking up here to set the cursor. I was clicking down here to set the cursor. Not exactly difficult, but is something that people who are new to Studio One, if they're coming from other products, it confuses them. They're not used to going to the timeline or going below to set the cursor. They're used to clicking right in their audio. Now you can click right in your audio in the top half and it sets the cursor. And I do like that we have this vertical line which just makes it easier to set the cursor where we want. And then if we go down below, we have all the behaviors of the range tool, excuse me, all the behaviors of the arrow tool. Now you see it's a big arrow there, you think I'd say the right thing. Up here, range tool, up here, down here, arrow tool. Now, if you don't remember any of this, so what? Try it a few times and it really becomes, eh, no big deal. I don't think a new person is going to be impressed by this. It just works the way they expect, and they'll be happy about that. And somebody who's been using it a while, it takes about 15 minutes to transition to this new way of working, and you just don't can't go back. There's no way to go back. It's just too much work the other way. So in other words, punch and roll, this is what we're going to do. Set your cursor, press space bar, and you play, and that works just great. You have these other tools where they've built in little pieces from the split tool because they've analyzed what we're doing all the time, and they realize there are certain behaviors that follow other behaviors. And let me give you a couple examples. If you're in the upper half here and you use the range tool and you highlight a range, what do you think you're gonna do next? Well, for a lot of people, in a lot of instances, they're gonna make this into its own event because they want to do something to this particular audio. Now with a simple double click, we've taken some functionality that was in the split tool and we now have split this off into its own little range. And we can grab this and we can manipulate this audio here. We can go over onto the edge and we can change the fade in and out. We can grab this and adjust the type of fade that we have. All things that we would normally want to do right after we make a selection. And now instead of needing to switch tools between 
the different ones available to make things happen between the first three here. We can do it all without ever touching the keyboard, without ever going up here. And you could do all this stuff before. I mean, I've done thousands of these with the keyboard shortcuts, but I happen to know some extra keyboard shortcuts. You're not going to need to learn what I did. You are going to have it so much easier than I did when I was growing up. Yeah, right. Whatever. So the other thing we can do is anytime we want to use the split tool, we could go up there and do the split tool and click, and that will split off exactly where we want. But in addition, now when I have the smart combo tool running, I can simply double click and that will split it off for me. And then there's a couple little finesse things that people will not get at first, and I just discovered them by accident. So let me give you an example. The tool is so smart that it knows, you know, this is still a drag handle that will allow me to adjust the fade on the edge of any event. And I haven't selected this. In the old days, we would have to actually select this, and then we could drag that around. And depending on how you select and what you do, sometimes it'll interact with the one on the other side. Sometimes it won't. There's some really smart behaviors here. But see, over here, I haven't selected this one, and I still can drag it around. So even when the event isn't selected, if I'm in the smart tools, I can do some of this. And then there's this other really cool thing that almost nobody knows at this point. The drag handle down here to adjust the curve on the fade is still there. And if you know it's there, you can find it and you can finesse it. Now, if I go back and let me show you, watch. When I turn on or select this event, you can find that little handle here to drag it. I just happen to know it crosses right at the zero point here of the, right in the center line, I should say. There's the little drag handle. So if I'm over here and I want to adjust this, I happen to know that right down here, there's gonna be a drag handle. And now I can finesse it. In the old days, we had to actually select the event, find the drag handle and drag it up and down. And people don't get how cool that is. It's a finesse thing. If I'm working with an hour of audio, we may do this operation 20, 30, 40 times. I've just eliminated 20, 30, 40 clicks because I don't need to select this in order to find that. And I can find that and tune that. And this is happening with these smart tools all the time. There's more actions that you and I don't know about, but that make sense. Let me give you another one. We go ahead and we highlight this. What do people want to do after they highlight something? Now you notice I'm not on the arrow tool, but I'm up above here in the range tool but I actually can grab this and drag it straight down if I want or reposition it, put it on a new track. If I add the control key, I'll get a copy or command. And I made a copy of that. In the old days, we would have had to take this thing and we would have had to do this and then we would turn it into its own range and then make sure we're on the arrow key, the arrow tool, excuse me, and then we could drag it around and manipulate it. So do you see that They've taken things and thought about, okay, what is somebody going to do after they create a range? Well, a lot of times what they're going to do is they're going to take this thing and they're going to put it down here in this other place. And they may make a copy. They may do a move. But that's a real finesse thing. It's not documented. But boy, is it ever cool. It's just going to save you time. So this is a great tool. And frankly, it has a really small learning curve, meaning that if you've been using Studio One like I have maybe thousands of hours, then every once in a while it'll do something I forget. Oh, yeah, wait a minute, I'm on the range tool. But usually I see it, and I know exactly what the range tool does. I know what the arrow tool does. And once you know those, you can combine them, and you just start working, and you really don't think about it. You don't have to touch the keyboard. That's a big win. If you want to, and I recommend this at points, if you're a learner, if you're an explorer, if you're someone that really wants to know how the tools work so that you can finesse them and save yourself some time, take five minutes and turn this off and get to know what you can do with each of these tools individually. Because once you know what each of these can do individually, then you'll also know how they work combined. And then there are a couple hidden behaviors that people just don't know. And watch my videos or just practice forever and you'll find them too. I mean, I stumble over them all the time and I go, gosh, those guys are smart, they are clever, and they're thinking about how we really work in the real world. So hats off to them. All right. The next thing we're going to look at, quick zoom. Now, how many times you have something? You see there's a little bit of noise here, but it's not very zoomed in. So what can I do? Hold down two keys. It's going to be shift alt or shift option, depending on your platform. And I get the magnifying glass and I go here and that just zoom that right into there. If I needed to zoom again, I could select the range again and I've zoomed in even more. 
And then if I hold the same keyboard shortcuts and I click once and click twice, I'm right back to where I was before. So you can zoom in and out in a hurry with this quick zoom feature. Remember, shift alt or shift option gives you the magnifying glass. Zoom in two, three times if you choose to, and then go ahead and work on this for a while. Hold the same keystroke, click, 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 and I'm back to where I was. You can zoom in and zoom out, go back and forth. and It's really, really slick. Now here's one more thing. Layers are something that we use all the time for dialogue cleanup. I've got a whole video on that. So most of you know in order to see the layers, we have to expand them right here. Then we have the shortcut keys and we expand and we hide the layers. Now they've given us a little button over here. Anytime you have layers, you can simply click on this button and expose them or hide them. And anybody that knows me for a little while knows I always have lots of tracks and other things set up in my template behind the scenes, but I like them all hidden until I actually need them. So most of the time that's gonna be hidden, and then when I need it, it's there. I don't have to think about it. So it's just a nice little finesse thing. Now there's a couple more interesting options, and these are finesse options, meaning not everyone's gonna use them, but that's okay. If you come from Pro Tools, some of these things you're gonna to wanna to use. And if you don't, well, you may or may not. It just depends on you know, what you're doing. But for example, now we can right-click on the transport, and we have a new thing called Loop Follow Selection. So I have that turned on, and I'll talk about the other ones here in just a second. But all that means is if I select something, it automatically turns on our loop marker. When is that handy? If you're doing revisions. Now I have a whole revision system. I have a, if I'm gonna do one revision, I do it a certain way. If I'm gonna do three or four or five, it's really probably the same way. And I'm gonna show you that right now. But if I'm doing 10 or 20 revisions on a file, then I'm gonna handle it differently because it just depends on what you're doing. But in this case, you can use song, export mix down, and you can go ahead and choose the option between loop. And now I'm gonna export three and a half seconds here in order to do some processing in RX and then bring it back and paste it right in so it's gonna match my original audio. So there's some really great things when you're exporting to take a little loop and I highlight this, it's all set up, export. Highlight this revision, go ahead and export. I don't need to do a whole lot. I mean, it's already setting it just by highlighting the range that I want and then I can export it, just an example. Now, I don't always want that. It doesn't hurt anything to leave that on. I'm gonna turn that off. And then the other thing they have is a brand new feature, and this is really for power users who are coming from other things. Pro Tools, I can't remember what Logic does, but certainly Pro Tools, they have a feature called Enable Play Start Marker, and it works like this. There are times where I'm working on this little piece of audio, and I'm working right here. When I play this, I actually want to start a little bit earlier and get this edit in context. Linnell set her basket on the table. So Linnell set her basket on the table. If I wanted to work on this, sometimes, even though I'm going to be working on the audio right in this particular region, it doesn't mean I want to start playing it from there. I'm going to maybe adjust this down, double click, bring this down. I still want the start to be back where I was. Linnell set her basket on the table. And that was because I was manipulating this spot here, but I want playback to start back here. And that happens all the time. I don't want to listen to it right here because... Linnell set her basket on the <laughs> and I just had that turned on. So I'm gonna take that and turn that off. And there's a keyboard shortcut to turn that on and off. So you can do it really quickly, but I don't wanna start right where I'm working. That doesn't, I don't wanna hear this. I wanna start over here. So there's times where you need more finesse, more options, because the place you're working is not really what you want to do in terms of listening. You wanna start it someplace else, work here, keep starting it back here over and over again. And there's some other ways of doing that but it's a new power tool for people transitioning for other, from other platforms and people that really know what they're doing with Studio One. This is just gonna get better and better and better. And it's already the best punch and roll solution out there. And it's editing continues to add more finesse elements to make it easier for us to succeed and do it in less time. And I know you're gonna discover some things that I haven't already exposed. So be sure to put them up in the Facebook group. And of course, this is Don Barnes and I look forward to seeing you on the wires.